Aha. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we have a special guest with us. We've got Andy Savard, who is going to be talking about plogging. So you wonder what plogging is? Well, you got to find out, you got to listen in to find out what plogging is. So Andy is, um, he's been with uh, the hospitality industry for 35 years and worked in various positions from a cook, um, bartender, manager, and then catering supervisor. He is also a lifelong marathon runner that led him to cross Canada on foot three times. As an ambassador for three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. He saw that impact society is making on the environment and he took it on, on himself to run across Canada unsupported and gathered plastic bottles and other containers along his route. Seeing so much food waste and how little restaurants were recycling, it bothered him. From day one, the litter, the litter on the side of the Trans-Canada Highway really bothered me, bothered him. So he started to clean up. He found his happy place. He never was, he was never one for publicity or having a sponsorship to help him along the way. This is a passion he has taken on himself. And since then, he is, has inspired thousands along his journey. People meet him along his route, hold bottle drives to do their part or to keep our country as one of the most beautiful places around the world. So join us today as we interview Ari. Uh, sorry, did I just say Ari? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Andy. 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 <laughs> sorry about that, Andy. I'm Fatima. I'm Fred. I'm John. I'm Cyrene. Excellent, we'll bring Andy on board now. <laughs> Uh, we've got you sideways. There we are. Um, there, there, we go. Go. there we go. Now we can see you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Andy, for being here. And it is very commendable as to what you're doing. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, good morning and thanks for having me. Um, yeah, like you said, I've been uh, since 2013, been kind of like a passion a hobby of mine is to run back and forth across various parts of Canada uh cleaning up as I go um meeting new people and 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 seeing uh seeing new amazing things uh so it's been um it's been great and then I balance it out by by working and saving my money in the fall and the winter and try and get out as much as I can in the spring and summer to uh to clean up clean up along the roads mm -hmm. so I got a question plogging is that something that is actually a like everyone's wondering what is blogging, but is that something you created or is that something that is actually a term that's out there? Well, actually, yeah, it's a term that's out there now. I mean, and um, I first heard about it, I want to say 2016, 2017. Um, a friend of mine from Vancouver sent me a link and it was uh, based on um, a group of people in Sweden. So the actual, like, uh, if you go on Wikipedia, for example, blogging um, goes back to Sweden in 2016. Uh, it joins the words uh, to to plucka, which is like to pick up in, sw in Swedish, and uh, jogga, jogging. So they just combined it together to say plogging is like while you're out for a jog, you pick up litter in your in your neighborhood or in the parks or along the trails or whatever else. And and uh, it's kind of just spread from there. I mean, like it's now being adopted like countries all over the place and it's been, be, be, become quite the, uh, quite, quite the phase. Wow, that's brilliant. I have to say, um, when I first moved into my neighborhood, I live in North Vancouver, I was running and I used to pick up a plastic bag with me and I used to pick up the garbage along the way. And I only started that because I was running. I'm like, wow, there's so much garbage. Why not pick it up? Mm -hmm. um, I have stopped doing it since and I don't know why, but I've <laughs> done it for a little while and I, haven't, I, didn't, I didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know it was plugging. I didn't know that other people was doing it. And I'm like, maybe that's something I should start doing again. But the only thing that I didn't like about it is that I was picking up garbage in a single use plastic bag. 
I would have to figure out a way to pick up my garbage, but not in a plastic bag, maybe in something different so I don't add to the garbage. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Uh, I definitely recommend um, you can get the, uh, the mesh uh, laundry bags in various sizes, um, <laughs> like really big ones or smaller ones. And they're great. Uh, number one, they're mesh. You can reuse them. You can wash them. But also because they do have the holes in them, like if you pick up a can or two or and it's wet or has a little bit of liquids left in it, then it won't uh, kind of gather up in, the, in your bag. So that's, that's what I use now on my longer road trips. Nice. I like, I like the trick. So how did you get the vision of doing this? How did you come about figuring this out in 2013? What motivated you? Well, it started um, just as a, a single run across Canada, but I wanted to do it like a minimal carbon footprint and I wanted to promote, reduce, reuse, recycle. So I didn't have a support vehicle. I didn't have a, um, I didn't you know, go into any hotels or anything. I, I had a solar power, uh, solar pa panels to charge my phone and whatnot. And then um, a friend as a joke, when I was talking about the trip said, well, what about the return flight from, uh, from um, Newfoundland back to Vancouver? That's a carbon footprint. So I thought about it and I was like, maybe I'll run there and back. But um, right off the bat, right off the bat, like uh, like was mentioned in the bio, is the um, the litter on the side of the road bothered me. So I decided to pick up the balls and cans um, to uh, you know like to again to enforce the reduce, reuse, recycle. And then uh, when I cleaned up um, a little over thirty one thousand balls and cans going from Vancouver to Newfoundland, uh, it kind of oh. reinforced all from one side of the highway. So it kind of reinforced the, the decision to run back and clean up the other side of the highway. And then I just got hooked. I mean, I, I just, you know, when, I, when I'm out there and, and just meeting great people and, and seeing beautiful parts of the country, I, that's, that's a happy place for me. So if I can do it year round, I would, but right now I have that kind of work half the year and run half the year uh, balance when, when possible. So you run from Vancouver all the way back east? All the way to Newfoundland. The, the first trip took- uh, That's incredible, took, man. <laughs> the first- uh, the first trip took two, two years because I had a late start. I didn't leave um, Lower Mainland until like mid-July of 2013. Okay. So when I got to um, Ontario, I pretty much a little bit uh, halfway point, and that was my home province. So I stayed and worked in Ontario that winter of 2013, 2014. And then spring of 2014, I continued on from Ontario and, and reached Newfoundland, uh, October of, late October of 2015, or 2014, sorry. Wow. So if you if you say that you're working half the year, then um, you must have a job or a business that allows you the flexibility where you can work from home and you know be mobile. Uh, I did uh, <laughs> prior to um, the, uh, the the industry being kind of shut down um, this year. So I was uh, I worked for a big catering company in Vancouver. And when most people think catering, they think weddings and whatnot, but a lot of our business, majority of our business was from uh, corporate events. Um, so say a big company downtown wanted to have a, an event for 500, 1,000, 2,000 people. They would typically have them um, in the fall because you know a lot of their employees might be on holidays over the summer. So the, um, the catering business really ramps up and or it did anyway, in uh, you know, September, October, November, mm -hmm. previous years. But, um, now I'm gonna to have to uh, find out uh, something different for this this winter because, um, as you can imagine, there won't be any events of uh, nope. 500, 1,000, or 2,000 people. Then <laughs> nope. Anytime hey, soon. you're gonna get 50 <laughs> people at max. That's it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's like in a best case scenario if uh, mm -hmm. if things don't get you know cut back like they they have been in parts of Ontario. I think they're back down to 10 people now. Mm. Wow. So I'm I'm pretty sure Chef Fred can relate because he's he's also he's a chef as well that's right yeah yeah he understands the catering world very well yeah yeah i understand that it collapsed completely exactly completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh well so you just came back from uh whistler yes that's right i, I did um once once i realized i couldn't go across canada this year because in april the plan was to uh fly to newfoundland uh where i have you know my camping gear and a buggy and everything there. And then I was going to run back to Vancouver and that would have been cross Canada trip number four. Wow. But, um, but in April, I mean, like, in, you know, travel between provinces was, was definitely frowned upon. Mm -hmm. And I think even Newfoundland uh, shut down the, the uh, ferry back to the mainland, unless it was like essential travel. So I would have been, I could have been stuck in Newfoundland or I could have been stuck in another province or I would have had to maybe isolate every yeah. uh, province I crossed into. So, 
I decided instead of going across Canada, I would just do several um, trips throughout BC. So I began uh, with a um, two week trip up to uh, Lillooet and back actually in late April, early May. And then I did a tour of the Okanagan in uh, June, um, late July I did uh, Sunshine Coast. And then I had such a good time and connected with great people up in Whistler Pepperton area. So I, I told them in the spring that I would come back for a fall cleanup. So I just finished that uh, last week. Wow. Excellent, that's pretty cool. And you I mean, were biking or you were running? Uh, running. I run. I run everything, and, and I push uh, along a little baby jogger. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So, so that has my tent and sleeping bag and food and water and everything, and then I have uh, hockey sticks extending off the um, baby jogger, and that's where I, what I hang the mesh bags over, and that's where I can load up on on all the litter that I'm cleaning up as I go. Mm -hmm. Nice. So what, what, and, and, go ahead. <laughs> what would be what would be your message to us who lives in BC, who travels to Whistler quite often? You know, because you must have seen a lot of, I don't know if maybe there's a lot of garbage along the way, maybe not. I'm not too sure. But what would be your message to us who drives there quite often? Um, just very simply, just keep it in your car. Keep a little plastic bag, uh, or not plastic bag. Sorry, keep some sort of a reusable bag to put your um, your food waste, put your your, your, your um, single use uh, cup, waste, coffee, cans, whatever else. Um, keep it in your car until you get home or until you get your destination and then dispose of it properly there. I think too many people, um, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. They want to keep the inside of their car clean. So mm -hmm. if they have a little bit of trash and they figure there's lots of space out there and if nobody's watching, they'll just roll down the window and, and toss it out. And, and yes, unfortunately, uh, from what I've seen, the, the road up to Whistler is um, is one of the, the, the dirtier parts of Canada, for sure. And that's well, a hard that's... thing because most of us is going so fast along that, uh, you know, that highway that mm -hmm. I don't see any garbage. It's, it's when you it all... slow down, like what you do. When you slow down. Long, exactly, yeah. Everything in the, in the ditches and so forth. But my question was, when you're gathering all this stuff, it seems like you're gathering a lot of stuff, right? So what happens when you fill up before you get to the place where you need to unload? Like, what do you do when you get so much? Do you just kind of like you stop okay. and then you just get to the next town or whatnot and throw it into the recycling bin or how, how do you kind of change up your your supply well i do i do have um i always try and unload wherever i can whenever there's a, a roadside turnout or a, a scenic lookout mm -hmm. uh with garbage bins and recycling bins even if my bag is only half full if i pass one of those i'll definitely unload because you never know how much litter you see <laughs> around the corner but there have been times where i've had to um like you know tie everything up in a recycling bag or in a compostable bag and and leave it at a and maybe an intersection or like a little little area where cars can pull over and they'll often post it on social media or like you know even contact a few people I know in the area and just say like hey I you know I um I had to leave a bag here like can you can you grab it next time you're driving by and and that usually helps as well well oh, that's cool good idea and yeah. do you ever pick up like big items like tires or TVs, shopping mattresses, <laughs> <plus> beds. <laughs> yeah, there's the, of course, there's, there's 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 lots of that out there as well, and and um, that's an it brings up an interesting point about the the difference between plogging and uh, the term picking. Um, for example, there are a lot of people uh, locally that will do um, a weekly uh, cleanup of their neighborhood, but they'll be very thorough. They'll you know they'll call it picking, and they go in and they get everything you know from deep out of the kind of off the highway and maybe hidden behind some trees. And that's where you would find beer items like that. And they'll work together as a group and they'll often have the uh, cooperation with the um, municipalities where if they'd like bring everything out or come by in a pickup truck and bring it to a certain spot, then the city will take it from there and, and pick it up with their trucks and, and dispose of it properly. Right. Whereas plogging, um, you're kind of like limited. Uh, obviously if you're just running by yourself and you have a small bag, you'd only carry so much. I can carry a little bit a little bit more, like maybe up to four or five hundred, you know, balls, cans, and and various other items. Uh, as I'm pushing on the baby jogger before I have to um, unload somewhere. So I guess you could actually uh, tell somebody that look, there's a mattress or a sofa or exactly, yeah. a shopping trolley somewhere, and it needs to be picked up. Yeah. Sometimes even it's just a point of it's if it's kind of hidden down in the ditch and you can't see it as you're driving by. Sometimes even if I can just like pull it up and like bring it up to uh, the next um, sign or a highway sign or whatever else, then I, fingers crossed, hope that, you know, somebody who works uh, 
for the municipalities or works for the yeah, highways yeah. will see it and pull over and, and grab it uh, throughout the day. Yeah. How about along your journeys? I mean, like, where are you staying? Like, are you camping on the side of the road? Are people hosting you? And and like, because you're 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 gaining a, lo a loyal following as well, right, Andy? So, mm -hmm. kind of, how does that kind of work out? People reaching out to you and kind of helping you along the way. Uh, very good point because um, I always preferred it, not always prefer, I always started uh, with a tent and a sleeping bag idea and I would just find a spot, um, you know, like hidden off in behind some trees somewhere, not too far from the highway where I can like pitch a tent and, and not be bothered for the night. But um, now that I have crossed Canada three times, I know people in, in every province. So it's usually not more than a week to 10 days before somebody's like contacting me and saying, hey, we got we have dinner ready for you and a, and a warm place to sleep. So that's, that's kind of nice too. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> awesome. What has been your favorite um, run or journey that you've gone on? Oh, yikes. Um, I, I would say last year's uh, cross Canada trip um, was, was probably my favorite. Cause I started, I started in uh, April on Vancouver Island. And last year was the first time I made it coast to coast before winter hit. So it was the first time I made it across in, in one go, which uh, was a bit of a challenge challenge for me. But um, also because like I said, um, having, having um, made new friends along the way, uh, last year I did have a lot, of, uh, lo a lot of support and a lot of uh, people driving out to bring me um, meals or, or, or snacks or stuff, or just, just, just to even join me, join me for uh, you know, 30, 40 kilometers of, of running. People would come out and and run with me as I approach their city and town. So last year was pretty special for me and, and uh, my favorite favorite uh, cross Canada trip so far. Mm -hmm. Hopefully next year will be an even better one. Have you had any memorable um, opportunities or interviews that you've come across? Uh, yeah, I, I, my very first trip I kept, um, I was running under, under the radar, so to speak. Um, I didn't really contact uh, press or anything else. But on, the, on my second trip coming back, um, a friend in St. John's, Newfoundland, contacted CBC on my behalf and uh, they started following me. So I had a few great radio and television interviews along the way. But um, I think more so than that, I really liked the fact that I, I know quite a few teachers coast to coast and they've invited me to come and speak to their schools as I'm running by. And that's, that's where I really get a, a good kick out of uh, sharing my story with the, with the younger generation. So that was... That was that was always special. Yeah, I... that would be very empowering and inspiring. That's for sure, Andy, because I don't think that a lot of people get it, you know, mm -hmm. or recycling or or um, picking up garbage. Yeah, mm -hmm. the younger generation they know about it. They're growing with it. Yeah, and that's what I like about it because it's normal for them to recycle. It's normal for not littering. It's normal to accept everybody the way they are. It's normal to, you know, which is. A great way to look at where the world is going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know we still have a long way to go because you're still out there picking up stuff so that means there's still people out there who are not you know taking that action to to be more aware of what they're doing and how impactful they are to whether either positive or negative um but you know you know we all run i mean we all walk or we run and you know i see stuff on the side of the road like we're seeing unfortunately like now with what's going on i see masks i see gloves you know i see things on yeah. the ground but you know, it's, it's, it's like, again, like what Fred is saying, do I go out there and just run for the sake of doing that stuff? Because it is like, I need to wear gloves to pick up that stuff as well. And, you know, it becomes almost like it's, it's more than just a single person. It's more like it's got to be like a community thing where you got to go out there and kind of watch after your own block. So, but it's good that you're, you mentioned to me before that you, you do these kind of, um, when you do reach certain destinations, you have like, um, uh, people that come out, whether they're, I think you said the mayor or something, or somebody that comes out to kind of do kind of like a uh, awareness day or something like that, or a cleanup day? Uh, well, moving forward, I, I would like to um, do that more and more, especially on my next Cross Canada trip. I would like to contact the uh, communities, um, uh, you know, a couple of days before I'm, I'm going to get there and just say, hey, as I'm passing through your town on, on whatever, say it's late July 3rd, uh, come on out and, and join me or just even clean up other parts of uh, the area, even if it's not coming close to the highway, just get more people involved. But um, I think uh, I think I think more and more each year, uh, you do see community cleanups. You see people out there volunteering, out in ball drives, I mean, cleaning up the the local roads and parks and whatnot. 
And I think that'll eventually turn the tide. Like even if there's, even if there's only 2% of, of, of people who drive do litter uh, out their window, there's 16 million you know, people with their driver's license in Canada. So that's 2% of that is, is still quite a lot. Mm -hmm. But I think um, even those people that are kind of set in their ways and, and you think they may not change, if they see their, their community, if they see their um, maybe even family, maybe even like nieces or nephews out there cleaning up, then they might stop and think like, yeah, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we're heading in the right direction. So now across, since you've been across um, Canada, what province or city has been the cleanest and the dirtiest? Oh, oh. Well, <laughs> you lose some um, fans and gain some fans. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I can't say. Um, I can't say there's any one city that's as dirty. Obviously, the more populated an area is, the more the more litter will be. The more, the more, um, uh, more traffic there is on a road, you know, the more likely it's it's there's gonna be litter. But I, I say it, um, being like um, Ontario, born and raised. Uh, some parts of Northern Ontario are probably some of the worst areas because of, uh, it's, it's uh, again, it's like the trans down of the highway, very busy, a lot of people on road trips, and there's um, a lot of uh, places where there's, there's like no towns or around or anything else, and, and people aren't likely to, to go out and do a community cleanup. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing, I hate to say it, in Ontario, still to this state, there's no deposit on pop cans or water bottles or anything, anything that, whereas in BC, there's a deposit on everything. Ontario, there's only a deposit on beer and, and liquor and whatnot, but uh, any, um, any other beverage containers, uh, there's no incentive for people to really take them back. So unfortunately, I think that means more people just, just throw them out. Wow. And, you know, it's and, actually and interesting that you say that because, so we have, we have our compost program here in Vancouver and in Toronto, it's not so it's not so restricted, I guess, or regulated. And mm -hmm. my, I've got ants who are out in Toronto, and we were all sitting together at our house. And so all of us, we know, food go into one, the napkins go into one, and then everything else goes into the garbage. And so my aunt was just like throwing everything into. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, it's fine. And then she started mixing in the plastic into the food. I'm like, no, 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 you can't do that. You're going to get fine. She's like, nah, nobody's going to actually, I'm like, no, trust me here. We're going to get fine. So yeah. it's quite interesting that you say that, you know, they don't have that. And it, it, it's kind of interesting to me because, you know, Toronto being so populated, you would think that they would have all of these regulatory bodies in place. Well, when I used to live in Toronto and I lived in a building, it's totally different than somebody who lives at a house, right? You're more regulated in a building and we did have our compost. We did have our plastics. So it depends on your environment, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just say Toronto is like that because it's not. Well, right? you know what, when, when you're talking about people checking, like the, the garbage companies that come by, they yeah. do check because you get those stickers on your bins that says, please do not throw a rock in here because I think they have cameras. Like when the, when, the, when the bin gets tossed into the truck, I think there might be some kind of sensor or something like a camera where the driver takes a look and see if people are throwing out like gyp rock or, you know, asbestos or styrofoam and yeah. they put a sticker on your thing saying, you know, next time you're going to get fined or you're going to get charged for that. So they are, they are, they're pretty good. Like I'm actually happy that they do that because then you don't get people throwing out, you know, nuclear waste in their garbage can <laughs> or, <laughs> or something that you, you shouldn't be, that you should be sorting and, you know, making your weekly or monthly trips to the to the compost place if you can't throw in your garbage like i collect my stuff and then i make my trip to you know for electronics or you know like gyp rock or or like mattresses i got a mattress i got to throw out now so i got to make a trip to to the to the depot to do that and it's all free most of it is free it's just you know take your time to just kind of take the time to do that take your time to do it and i think that has some people just don't have the time or they just don't feel like they they can do it but that's Hopefully that's changing, like what yeah. Andy's saying is the shift is coming, right? Mm -hmm. Or it already is coming. Yeah. And I think uh, as well that um, every, every community, every, every city or town, uh, if, if you go on their municipal website, for example, I, I live in Coquitlam, and if I just um, want to know what the, the garbage pickup is or whatever else, I go like Coquitlam Garbage, uh, search on the internet, and they do have a usually breakdown of, of where everything goes. And, but the challenging part is, of course, 
different parts of Canada, even within a province, different uh, cities or towns may have different policies for, for what goes where. So it's, uh, it's a lot of information out there, but um, but like you said, if, if everybody just kind of just takes, uh, takes a minute to find out what the uh, rules and regulations are in their community, then, uh, then, then the information is usually there, uh, usually there online. Yeah, we're pretty, like we, in Vancouver, we get um, messages. Like, I don't know if you guys subscribe, but uh, garbage pickup, um, yeah. if you subscribe to the municipal garbage, they, they'll text you the night before and saying tonight, tomorrow is going to be the blue bin, the green bin, and the black bin, or it's going to be just the green bin or the blue bin. So at least you know, and it's pretty cool because it keeps people, like, you get the message because everyone's on their phone, right? They might yeah. forget to look at their garbage schedule, but they're not going to forget a message on their phone. Mm -hmm. So that's something good as well that... Uh, you know, people are, again is adopting adopting and just getting this habit uh in here yeah and a reminder too it's a holiday there was a holiday on monday so it's uh, gonna be a day late this week yeah <laughs> <laughs> i need that um, that's for sure <laughs> yeah so, so actually one of the cities in um so ladner ladner to Austin, they actually what they do is they have um they have a pickup so every like springtime they do ladner pickup and what it is is basically people will you know do spring clean out and they'll take out the things that they don't need from their house it could be furniture it could be whatever and they just everyone puts it on the side and everyone literally goes to different neighborhoods to see what they can use um so then they're reusing and then of course reducing and you can find some really nice furniture um sets like tvs anything that you know people have got excess of like you'll find it out there and then the city will basically come whatever's left over the city will just take it all and pick it up like so it's free of charge yeah good idea. So it's, it's really cool how they do that like you know and I, I that's pretty cool like that they can actually do something like that and i know in a lot of townhouses or even a uh, condos they're able to do that they do have certain days where they do have um pick up like condo uh, cleanup whatever um and we're actually sort of coming to an end uh, if you guys have any last words that you'd like to say or mention so before we say anything else andy are there three tips that you can share with someone that is wanting to start out do you start up with plugging or yeah uh, uh this year more than ever i mean wear your wear your gloves or and if you can use one of the uh, little claws or a little garbage picker uppers to, to pick up the balls and cans or masks or whatever else that is out there. Um, do, do it with, do it with like a friend or a family member and, and, and get, uh, get um, kids involved if you can, get them sort of in the habit of, of when you're you know, out there, out there kind of uh, cleaning up your neighborhood, um, you know, get them excited about it as well. And um, yeah, just uh, just spread the word. I mean, like uh, share share if you clean up your neighborhood, if you cleaned up a little bag of garbage from a certain park, just share it on social media. Maybe people will see that and they'll do the same in their their neighborhood, or maybe those people that actually littered in that park will see that and be like, "Oh my God, I, I got busted. I better not do that anymore." <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, I think uh, like the plogging plogging is 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 is. is it's like I said, it's, it works for me and, and it's, it's my kind of happy place and I want to keep doing it. But um, the overall message, which uh, a lot of people are sharing around the world now, is uh, cleaning up is one thing, but reducing the amount of uh, mm -hmm. single use plastic and everything else is, is, is definitely the key moving forward. So that's, uh, but that's, a, whole other, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Any of you, um, do you guys have anything that you would like to say or add before we... Anya, I just have a quick question with your mission you said you wanted to go um go to schools and share your vision yeah. but is there anyone you want to partner up with who do you want to reach out and say hey let's work together in a big way is it recycling Ooh. people or is it like trucks like who who would you love to partner up with you know what that's, that's that's a good question i've never really given that uh thought as far as like one big um as one big uh a partner and I bet I've always found um, that uh, what works best for me is, is sharing the word like one person one family at a time I mean like one of my favorite uh, stories is uh, on my first Canada trip um, a couple weeks after I stayed with 
somebody in Calgary uh, who I just met really that year. They sent me a message on Facebook. Um, you know, I was a couple hundred miles down the road and they're like, Hey, like since you pass through town now, every time we go and, and walk the dog, we, we, we bring a bag and we clean up our, our neighborhood. So thanks for doing that. So I think that I think is, is, is huge for me. It's just, uh, I think just the, the people, the little people collectively can, uh, can, can make the big difference for sure. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andy, for coming on. It's, it's very inspirational as to, to see what you are doing and to see how you're actually making a difference in our world and for our future generations. It's not just for us, but it's more so for our future generations. So thank you for doing what you do and keeping our planet or our country, I should say, beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been it's excellent. Been um, so now, first of all, congratulations to Karim Gurani. He did win the book, uh, The Healthy Home. So Karim, um, please give us a call and let us know and we will make arrangements for you to get your book. Uh, next Tuesday, the 20th, October 20th, we are gonna be talking about decluttering. So you'll get the full version of decluttering. So again, if you have any questions regarding decluttering or if you have any questions for Andy, you can put them in the comments below. And for Andy, you will be able to see, if you wanna get in touch with Andy, we will have all of his links and his connections posted. So you will be able to contact Andy if you wanna connect with him and you know do some blogging with him. And then on October 22nd, we have another special guest. She is um, an OT. Her name is Rishma Dalla and she's gonna be talking about what is the face of stress. Um, so it's pretty exciting. We've got a few more exciting speakers coming up in October, if you would like to be a speaker, a guest speaker, please reach out to, to uh, one of us and we would gladly put you on. Anyways, thank you very much for joining in and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Thanks Andy. Thanks. Thanks Great seeing you all. Take care. Have a great day. Take care. Bye. -bye.